Watata. Movie reference, real quick. If you know it, comment down below right now. And I'm going to send you 20 bucks on Venmo, Cash App, Apple Pay, whatever. I just it popped in my head for whatever reason. I hadn't popped in my head for years. Watata. Sip it down. Sip it down. Uh, comment down below real quick. Come on, I want to give somebody some money for that. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in to this channel, once a week we upload a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece. This video is uncut. In today's uncut video, I really hope somebody commented down below already. But I'm going to show you some of the snakes here, some of the ball pythons that I have not, what well, we technically not be called maternally incubating, but I am leaving the eggs with the mother. Um, my understanding is that it's not true maternal incubation, but I am not artificially incubating the eggs. I'm leaving them with mom like I did last year with all of my females. And I wanted to show you some and also talk over some of the things that I do to have it successful. In fact, I think I only had one clutch last year that ended up not being good, and I don't think it had to do with leaving the eggs with the mom. It's a really cool thing to try if you have your room set up correctly, which I'll link a video right up here in one of these corners if you're watching on your computer or phone. You will be able to click on the link to see um, exactly how I have my snake room set up. I've made a whole video on that, and it kind of tells you exactly what you would need to do to have it set up the way I do, which is pretty good. Pretty good it's for successful uh, leaving the eggs with the mom incubation. Also, look at this. If you guys haven't been checking out the Redline Report, I just put um, this stuff on there. If, you, if you've been watching the channel, you probably have noticed that, uh, that this neon sign has a very reflective background. And I just painstakingly took a bunch of time to put gaffer's tape all along that plastic background so that it no longer does that. And you can see real close that it looks, doesn't look as clean. If you look up close, some of the spots I couldn't get super clean because there's actually wires running under there. But for the most part, like if you're standing back about that distance, which is how far I'll be standing back, at least when we're doing the actual show, it looks pretty dang good, man. Yeah, pretty solid. Pretty solid looking sign there now with that gaffer's tape on there. That was worth it, I'd say. What do you think? Okay. Let's take a look here at some of these snakes. Put you down on this Freedom Breeder rack shelf. You do not have a, if you do not have a Freedom Breeder rack shelf, man, I, they're just so useful and helpful. First mom that I'm super excited about that has a clutch right now is our GHI Mojave Pinstripe Het Clown, a possible extreme gene that was produced by my buddy Grant Hendergriffs, Graham Hendergriffs over at Hetty Herps up in Minnesota. Um, this girl, was produced back in 2017. So it's been a long time coming getting a clutch from her, but I'm super excited to have one now. Um, you know, she was paired with a GHI Stranger Red Stripe Yellow Belly. Uh, pretty cool pairing. So what I wanted to show you, and this is perfect, she's doing this right now. Part of this is probably honestly because I was making noise and moving her around. But what I'm showing you guys right now is that she is opening up on her eggs a little bit. And again, this is possibly because I was making a lot of noise outside and she's kind of already in a little bit of a defensive mode. But if I opened up this tub without having been in here already making noise and she was super tightly curled and the cocoa blocks didn't seem like it was very uh, moist at all, I would know that she's super tightly coiled because she's trying to hold in that humidity on those eggs. And I would add um, some cocoa blocks that was moist, not like super soaking, but pretty wet, pretty wet cocoa blocks I would add in there. Um, and then put it around her and I'm getting ahead of myself because there's, there's a step that I'm not talking about right now that I want to cover and I will, but just look at those beautiful eggs. She's got seven in there and super stoked. It's going to be some awesome snakes to hatch out of there. Lord willing. Um, so let me, let me take a step back and tell you something I do like with the snakes before they lay and when they have their pre-lay shed, which is also sometimes called the post-ovulation shed. Basically, if you've ever seen a ball python ovulate, it looks like they swallowed um, a small football or something of that nature, but they swell up pretty big. If you catch it, it's pretty cool to see. It's like, whoa, <laughs> my snake is huge. Um, not something I've ever gotten to say, really. 
unfortunately. But so well, let's uh, let's take a look at this girl who did just have her post ovulation shed. This is Candice. She um, has what probably about nine eggs in there. And once she had her post ovulation shed, there was a little bit of urates that she left behind. And so I cleaned that up real good and I switched out all her cocoa and just made it very fresh, a nice moist environment. Some people take out the water. I, I don't, I've never had a snake lay egg in the water. So I don't, I don't really worry about that. Um, so she is on some very fresh cocoa and when she lays, she'll have a nice clean environment to start keeping her eggs in and just looking good. Really looking forward to getting some sunsets this year because last year we didn't get, uh, we didn't produce any sunsets, which was a first for us since we started working the project. Um, other thing is another snake, same, same way. This girl, this is actually the one girl that didn't have a successful time with her eggs. Um, they went almost fully to term, but there was a lot of, uh, a lot of deformities happening and lots of, um, it wasn't a very good clutch to say the least. Um, but right now she's just had her pre-lay shed as well. So probably sometime within the next month, she should be laying some nice eggs and this nice bit of cocoa here. And hopefully it's uh, better than last year's. We got one more clutch in here that is holding there, but I wanted to tell you guys first before I show you that, because I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, sometime this month on Morph Market, I am so close to you, I'm going to be uploading, uploading. <laughs> I'm going to put a couple of snakes on auction. Some really, really cool snakes. Both of them female, both of them incredible. Borderline probably makes some people wonder why are you putting a snake like that on auction? You suck. But also not caring that somebody would think I would suck because I don't think it's going to suck for doing it. I think it's going to be awesome to put a snake like that up on auction and then we'll kind of be a little test because it's kind of been blowing my mind on this project. Some of the things I've, some of the prices I've seen people putting them for. So I'd, I love to see because the auctions I've done so far have gone for at least what I thought was current market value. So that's, that's great. And, um, you know, it's just a funny market right now. But I am saying this because if you are somebody who wants to pay attention to what snake I might put up there, then you should go follow Triple B on Morph Market, my Triple B store, Triple B, Triple B, like that sign back there, Triple B. That's what the logo looks like too, in case you forgot, or in case you're brand new. Go follow that store on Morph Market and probably, uh, I'd say about a week after this video came out is when I'm gonna throw a couple really incredible animals up there. I'm not gonna show you here, you're gonna have to look there. So just go follow that over there and I think it'll be worth it. Last clutch that we'll take a look at. We're only gonna have a handful of clutches here this season, which I am fine with because I don't wanna be overproducing. I wanna make sure there's good homes to be found for all the animals. Um, and, ooh, we've got an egg that went bad in there. I can see it already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull that egg out. I'm gonna try and do it as gingerly and delicately as possible. I don't disturb mom too much, but I can smell that egg. is not smelling good at all. It smells actually really bad. So we're gonna get that sucker out before it starts spreading its mold to other eggs, which it already kind of looks like it might be trying to do over here. And this is one of the, uh, you know, would this egg have gone bad had I not chosen to let the mom uh, do what I'm letting her do with these eggs? Maybe, maybe. Who's to really say? I, I couldn't say for sure. You know, maybe it's because I let this little piece of wet cocoa get in there. It could be, could be that. It's, you know, it's one of the, one of the risks, the potential risks you take when you're trying to do this movie, you're not taking the eggs out. So she's still got four good ones in there. So hopefully she does a good job with the rest of those. And, uh, that's a bummer to see one go bad, of course, always, but you know, that happens in the incubator as well. That happens all the time. I've had plenty of eggs go bad in the incubator. So it's not just because I'm letting mom keep the eggs that that happened that you could say for sure. Oh, you know what? I actually have one more female over here that is getting close to laying. Oh, she hasn't laid yet. We'll keep that one a secret for now. How about that? Uh, that's it. Maternal incubation. I think that was most of the tips I wanted to cover. If not, then if you have any questions about my not maternal incubation, but letting mom keep the eggs, 
on ball pythons and you have any questions about it because you might want to do it yourself or just are interested in general, leave a comment down below. I'll read through all the comments and I will do my best to get back to any questions that you leave down there and answer them to the best of my ability. Um, definitely something that's really cool and worth giving a try if you haven't and you have your room set up and you got your temps and humidity all, all knocked in good. It's a pretty cool thing. Moms kind of know what they're doing. Ooh, that egg smells bad. Whoa, oh. Ooh, man, I stood right over and cut a real good whiff. That is, I'm glad we did this video tonight because I didn't want there to be in there for one second longer. Should I throw some athlete's foot powder on that other egg that looked like it had a little spot on it? That's the question I'm going to ask myself and answer sometime before I go to sleep tonight. Hmm. Will it mess with the snake? It definitely doesn't mess with the egg. I've used athlete's foot powder per Jerry Robertson. Uh, for years on eggs in the incubator, so would it mess with an adult snake? Eh, I'll look real closely at the ingredients and make a decision. What would you do? Leave a comment down below. And also, uh, stay tuned for the next video coming up this weekend. And until then, y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you there on the next video. Aloha.